As Earth Week 2021 comes to a close, I wanted to talk with you about your health because Earth's health has a direct impact on it. Specifically, pollution and climate change are already negatively affecting our well being, and the effects are even harsher on the black community. Zeke McKinney, a faculty physician of occupational and environmental medicine with Health Partners and professor at the U of M School of Public Health, explains how the most vulnerable among us suffer the most. Well, first of all, let me clarify the myth that, you know, climate change and global warming are, are not exactly synonymous. Uh, I think people have always kind of used the term global warming, and to some degree that's true because overall the globe is in fact getting warmer. But within local uh, temperature areas or local weather patterns, you're going to see more extreme events. So that means here in Minnesota, we might actually get colder weather, not warmer weather necessarily. So it's not just as simple as, you know, is it hotter or is it colder? Uh, it's all the downstream effects of that that can be a problem as well. One of those downstream effects uh, is actually air quality, right? Air quality suffers in a warmer summer pattern in particular. How does that impact public health? With uh, increased uh, days with worse air quality, of course, people are going to have more asthma exacerbations, and that's going to be true for everybody. But for people who are living in areas with higher uh, degrees of air pollution in general, that's going to be worse, and those tend to be people of color or people who uh, are more financially unstable. And similarly, those same communities aren't getting as good of health care already, aren't having as good of access to health insurance already, and we're already seeing higher rates of chronic disease and worse outcomes in those communities as well. So essentially, all of these things are mutually reinforcing. There are additional problems that continue to make the existing problems worse. Living next to concrete, be it buildings or highways, those are urban heat island areas that tend to hold the heat not only during the day, but particularly at night. Absolutely true. I mean, I think that's where the, the term concrete jungle got a coined in the 1980s. You know, we see a lot of heat trapping with these uh, heavier density concrete environments, which is why, you know, having green spaces and parks is so much more important. But of course, that's a, of course a health impact for people who are especially very young and very old, where heat can be a significant stress for them. And, and again, if you're somebody who has economic instability, housing instability, uh, you know, being able to pay to run air conditioning for several days straight might be a problem. Talking about it more broadly, so, you know, with the changes in the climate, we're going to see uh, big shifts in, you know, environmental health impacts. So for example, mosquitoes being present at more times of year than they were previously. You might see transmission of, uh, let's say, for example, insect or vector-borne illnesses, such as like West Nile virus, uh, with a degree in terms of spread or uh, across the year than we would see otherwise. How are we doing, would you say, as a community or as a state? And what are some of the challenges that we're facing right now in making more progress on this issue? I'm a data-driven person at the heart of everything I do. And so if we know that there are people who are more profoundly affected and those same people have less resources, then by extension, I would say we should be providing more resources to those people in those areas. For example, you know, we're going to put solar panels into those areas and subsidize the power generation in those areas for homes and, and give people lower power bills. So then they, for example, can make sure they have access to air conditioning when we have uh, more extreme heat wave events. It's an issue that's not going to go away and we're going to be impacted by it sooner or later. Uh, that doesn't make it more or less important than other issues of social justice going on right now but it's one that we can't forget about because it isn't in our face today. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency is considering adopting statewide clean car standards right now. There's a link to more information at wcco.com slash links, Jack.